The state budget should soon affect everyone and is part of two big stories this week. Education majors at TCU may have a hard time finding a job. And everyone could soon be paying more for soda. Learn more in this week's newscast. From the Schieffer School of Journalism, this is TCU News Now. Welcome to TCU News Now. I'm Chris Blake. And I'm Sarah Fleischer. While some university students spent spring break in beach houses, one group of students spent some time being homeless. Jennifer Iller has the details. This is what it's like to be homeless. These TCU students experienced the feeling during homelessness in Tarrant County, a service spring break program. I feel like um, this whole part of Fort Worth I didn't know, and so it's part of our community and I wanted to get to know it. I chose to go on this trip because I wanted my spring break to have like a purpose, like significance. Um, I didn't just want to go home and sit on the couch and drink Dr. Pepper. Others chose the Fort Worth trip because it allowed them to continue serving in the community after the break was over. I mean, the trip is awesome just because it is in Fort Worth and it is our home. So that even after this trip, you can continue to work on the issues that you were open to in the, during the trip. Regardless of the reason, students say their participation increased their awareness and passion for the homeless population. My passion has definitely increased, um, mainly because of the face-to-face -face interaction and seeing that it is a, a, a big issue in this community. It wasn't necessarily a, a place that we went or a person that we talked to, it was just the conversations in general with the people and hearing stories. During the four-day period, students served food to people who are homeless, helped at resource centers, and spent the night in shelters. We haven't really had to, I think, get that full experience of homelessness, but um, I think at times there's been some uncertainty of where we were going to go and what we were going to be doing next. Meg Matthews said the experience gave her a better understanding of a homeless person's lifestyle. I mean, for a lot of us, it's, we don't carry our resources in a backpack and just move it around everywhere. So that was really um, different, but it also made you understand and relate to these people a little bit more and respect their lifestyle um, and just who they are and how they live. I hope they just really understand that you know, they're not that different than we are. While the trip may be over, participants said they plan to return to service sites to continue volunteering. Jennifer Iller, TCU News Now. To see how you can become involved, visit the Center for Community Involvement and Service Learning on the second floor of Jarvis. While many students here watched as the tsunami and earthquake hit Japan over a week ago, one TCU graduate experienced it firsthand. Jessica Fleming lives 80 miles from the earthquake's epicenter. She is not within the 50-mile radius of the nuclear plant where radioactive exposure is a concern. Fleming says it is still difficult to receive food, water, and supplies, and transportation is still a problem as well. The search to replace the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs is coming closer to an end. Two applicants are left. They are Teresa Powell of Temple University in Philadelphia and Catherine Calvin's Tool from Illinois Wesleyan University. The interview committee will make the decision who will get the position vacated by Don Mills. He will join the College of Education at the end of May. Teachers, principals, and students are fighting the education budget cuts in Austin. Madison Pelletier is in studio to tell us how the state budget deficit that could reach $27 billion impacts TCU students. Every year, the College of Education gives these booklets out to its graduates looking for a job. The book has everything from dress code to where the jobs are, but the books don't address the problem that will keep many education majors from getting a job this year. For the past three years, junior Katie Hall has been sitting in a classroom, hoping one day she'll have a classroom of her own. I just I want to have a classroom that kids want to be in, and um, I don't really care what grade level it is at this point. Hall came to TCU wanting to be a teacher and influence students in the classroom. My ideal job would be middle school social studies. But now she says she'll be happy to take any job, and that's what the TCU director of teacher placement is telling students to do. And what we tell them to widen their range of where they want to go, that they may need to go out to rural school districts or whatever and go from there. Yes, I've applied in San Antonio, Houston and some very small cities um, that I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, but at this point I'll just be happy to get a job. 
Because of the budget cuts, school districts across Texas are pulling out of career fairs. TCU had to cancel its all-state career fair because of the lack of participation, but the Metroplex career fair continued. We're only down six school districts, but most of the school districts would bring anywhere from two to six interviewers. This time they're only bringing like one. Um, I think for the interview day, as far as I'm concerned, it's, you know, hopefully by the time they uh, do the interviews the week after spring break, maybe a job will have will have appeared. Last year, all but two students had a job by November, and those two students were full-time substitute teachers. Young says the TCU College of Education has one of the best hiring rates of any university in Texas. We just keep hearing that they're not hiring and um, that you know we're basically going to be able to sub until something opens. Now Hall, along with most education majors, will be happy to teach any grade or subject. I like history and I like how awkward middle school kids are, so <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I don't know. As right now, I just want a job when I graduate. Young said he has already had graduates tell him they received notice that they will not be teaching next year if the budget is passed. The final budget will not be approved until April. The U.S. News & World Report put TCU in the top 100 for Masters of Business Administration programs. The survey looked at 437 MBA programs and the TCU program jumped 14 places from last year to number 80. Here is what some students thought about the ranking. Um, I think it's really good for TCU and for me graduating with a business degree that will look good to companies. And uh, I think any students coming in, that will persuade them to want to come to TCU too. I actually recently transferred here this year, and it was because that TCU has been climbing the charts. Um, they are 30 last year, and then 29 this year just means they're continually improving. Uh, the teachers are great. The students are great. I love everything about the business school. O. Homer Erickson, a dean of the Neely School of Business, said he was proud of the work put in by everyone involved in the school. With the growing turmoil in the Middle East, students had the opportunity to learn more about the issues they are facing. The Adran College of Liberal Arts hosted the event Uprisings in the Middle East and North Africa. The event was aimed to help students become more aware of the current issues as well as give background on the area. The event featured three panelists who are professors with different areas of the speciality in the Political Science Department. A new tax is being considered to help decrease the state deficit. Rebecca Jeffries in studio with a closer look at what may be affecting Texans' pocketbooks. Texas Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. proposed a soda tax that's given people some mixed feelings, but the potential effects on consumer soda buying habits are uncertain. Texas lawmakers are trying to expand the budget while cinching our waistlines with a new tax on sugar-sweetened drinks. However, some people doubt the tax will sway soda lovers. They have a sin tax on alcohol. Does it sway people? No. I think that people that love soda will continue to buy soda. I'd probably go from drinking two a day to one a day, or maybe even none a day. This sound will cost you one more cent per ounce if a statewide soda tax is implemented. You're either going to pay for it now in your soda tax or you're going to pay for it later in disease. The taxes would include both regular and diet sodas. However, some people think a tax is not the right way to go about changing people's habits. Taxing soda isn't necessarily the best way to go about making someone more health conscious yeah. because it's just soda. Yeah, I mean, I drink diet, but then people say it has aspartame and then like you'll get brain cancer. But then again, cell phones might give you brain cancer. Everything in this world can kill you, so I'm going to enjoy my soda. Texas is not the only state considering passing a soda tax. Washington and Colorado have already passed a similar tax. Goodson says the soda tax will just fall in line with what the government already does for less nutritious foods. Your foods that aren't necessarily nutrient rich, like sugary cereals and cookies and things that you don't need, actually have food tax on them. So it kind of lines up with what they already do. The New York Times said the average American drinks almost a gallon of soda every week. At that rate, a person would average spending an extra $63 per year on soda. Rebecca Jeffrey, TCU News Now. The tax would specifically affect sodas purchased at grocery and retail stores. When the proposal will go to vote is still undecided. The University and Intrafraternity Council invited three national fraternities to begin the process of becoming new chapters on campus. The IFC Expansion Committee reviewed 16 applicants. They narrowed down their selections to Kappa Alpha, Beta Theta Pi, and Delta Chi. The IFC plans to add one or two fraternities within the next two years. That's all the news for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Blake.
And I'm Sarah Fleischer. For all of your latest headlines, check out our website at tcodailyskiff.com. We'll see you next time.